dress differently, and you've seen how soldiers <laughs> dress, and you can sticker about it all you want, okay. that is the truth. Okay, that's that fine. And the thing about that was I asked a similar question, as did many other people. If you're trying to blend in overseas, why are you in Bastrop, Texas? You know, and, and as, the, as the gentleman was saying, you know, we dress differently in different parts of the country. So I'm not sure, you know, what Russians they expect to be out there in Cowboys. so his one word answer to you was plumbing. Yeah. Right? yeah I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, you know, a, and, 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 you know trying thing. to be respectful to the guy as I can because I do respect his service. But I just felt that he wasn't really there to answer people's questions. He was more there to read off cue cards. And it was like the Delphi technique. You know, yeah. it's yes. they oh, had the outcome that they wanted to have. They weren't going to change that. They just allowed you to go. It's really more of a venting session. Mm -hmm. Go out there, vent on the record so you can say, yeah, I went to the thing and I, I feel good about it. But they were still going to run the drill. Yeah, people were calling out the colonel. Uh, there was one guy who was ex-special forces that had served under there and said that these guys are liars. You can't believe anything that they say. Uh, there was a few guys that approached me that were spe uh, special ops that were like, you know, this is out of control. This is nothing like that I ever did while I was in. Yeah, this that's sticks the key out. thing. If you look at the number of people that showed up that were upset about this, and of course, there were a lot of people who were upset about this that couldn't go today because mm -hmm. they held this meeting during the day, not during the evening. And I think that backfired on them, though. Yeah. Because they had it scheduled where they announced it to be at 9 o'clock in the morning, and then me and Big Show, they said we pushed it to 11. So I guess they're expecting people to leave, but people didn't leave. They oh. called their buddies, say, hey, come on down here. They're having the meeting at 11. <laughs> The place yeah. was jam-packed. It was standing room. Yeah, only. I mean, the, the the judge even said, you know, I'm shocked at the fact this many people came out. And I'm sitting there thinking, why? Everyone's mad. No one wants this here. You've heard people for the past hour yes. verbally speak their minds about how they don't want this here at all. Even people who don't even watch our show had no idea what mm -hmm. InfoWars was. Mm -hmm. Just based off what they knew, what they could find on the Internet, we're completely against it off of that. Yes, absolutely. But the fact that you had so many people there hmm. makes it obvious that it's a lie that this is something they do all the time. This is not something they do all the time. People can look at this and say, this is not standard operating procedure, and we don't want it to become standard operating procedure. I mean, this is not something that the military has been doing all along. This is stepping it up, just as we're seeing all these increased drills in all the different cities, just as we saw in Fort Myers, where they went in at night with a helicopter. They march people out in single file, put them into white vans and drive them off, I guess, to a simulated prison or whatever. We don't want that happening in our country. And we know that with the indefinite detention that Obama signed, he says, don't worry, I'm not going to do it. We're just going to train for it, evidently. Yeah. Okay, That's what they're doing now. Not only did he then sign that into law, creating a quote-unquote legal infrastructure, although you know it should be challenged and it could be easily thrown out if we had anybody in government that uh, believed in the Constitution, Nevertheless, they pretend that they're creating a legal structure for this kind of stuff, and now we see them training for that, and as we saw it in AP Hill, as you mentioned to him. You know, a lot of people were upset with the fact that people were bringing it up, not the colonel, but people were bringing it up, why are we being labeled as hostile in Texas and Utah? And he goes, well, we, we wanted to come to Texas because Texas is very welcoming of our military exercise. We've had these for 25 years. This is nothing new. I was like, well, if that's the case, then for the past 25 years, you'd have a lot of pissed off people coming to these meetings, but no one's ever been to one because no one's ever known about it. They haven't been at this size and scale. They That's haven't right. gone on for two That's months. Right. They haven't, uh, you know, it hasn't been the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs, uh, Marine Expeditionary Fighting Forces, ex, uh, 82nd Airborne, U.S. Air Force Special Operations. This is excessive. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah. And the yeah. implementations of what this is going to be is what's scaring people. People are on edge. Yes. And that's one of the gentlemen brought up in the meeting he asked the colonel a question because he kept repeating that line that we've trained at, you know, AP Hill or whatever other place. So we wanted to go someplace different because we know those terrains like the back of our hands. And one of the gentlemen stood up and he said, you know, conservatively, you guys have hundreds of thousands of acres of land owned by the U.S. government. Why can't you train there? Yeah. You know, and there's, you know, really no good answer for that. They want to get in your face. This is part of the PSYOP. And of course, if anybody bothers to look up the definition, just go to Wikipedia and look at the definitions on Wikipedia. Uh, and they've got, uh, they take their definitions from the Department of Defense. Look at what they say unconventional warfare is. It's psychological operations. It's going in and using deceit to try to control the, the people who are in leadership in a community so they control, control the rest of the people. That's what it's about, and that's a large part of what this is about. Well, one of the questions someone that's asked it. from downstairs, I believe, it came up on a little cue card, was that would there be any kind of training for detaining uh, civil dissidents, you know, people... Mm -hmm. out here, any kind of roundups, and he said, no, nothing like that would happen. And then you asked a more specific version, which I thought was better. Tell him kind of... Well, hold on, let's cut to the clip. 
Uh, first of all, uh, sir, can I have you two gentlemen just for my camera? What's your name, sir? Oh, I'm sorry, my name is Chikari Jackson, InfoWars.com. Um, oh, thank you. Anyway, um, for the two gentlemen, can you guys, just for the camera, state your names and uh, positions again? I'll state my name. I'm sure. the spokesman for United States Army Special Operations Command. I'm the guy giving the brief. Yes, sir. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mark Lestore. I'm the Director of Public Affairs, United States Army Special Operations Command, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Okay, now we're talking about role players and you mentioned the role players. I'm curious as to how you guys came about these role players and also will there be any drills to round up and or detain the role players? As far as the role players go, they are gonna be service members. And if there's an incident like that, it's gonna be within the scope of the exercise for unconventional warfare for future operations overseas. Yeah, well, will anybody be detained or rounded up in the it, exercise? It's possible. It's for future operations overseas. So in the, in the uh, Convention of Unconventional Warfare, all right, there could be a point where it goes kinetic. So, and then you have to execute actions on the objective. Well, I, I guess we keep coming back to the same question, how are these guys going to blend in overseas? I mean, and at night. It all starts from the basics. Okay, we don't just go and say run. You gotta crawl, you gotta walk, and then you're running. So to start blending in, and we do it back here. We start picking up things that will apply later on. Hey, I do need to pay attention to certain types of shoes. These aren't available over here. And like I said before, and people were, were disagreeing with me, they dress differently in Fayetteville, North Carolina. They just do, it's bizarre. And by the time I had a chance to ask my question, I had noticed that people had asked this, a similar question, but in a different way. So I said, well, let me ask it this way and see how he responds. And then I asked him, you know, where are these role players coming from? And also, are you planning to detain, indoor, you know, round up these people in your role playing uh, scenario? And he said, it's a possibility. Yeah. You well, know? we know it's a possibility because we've got recordings from when they uh, went to another uh, county in Texas and they were talking about how the Helicopters are going to fly in from Louisiana. They're going to come in at 3 or 4 in the morning. They would only be there for 15 minutes because they're coming in to extract, uh, you know, the, these, these these people here. I, you know, I think that's exactly what they're going to do, exactly what we saw in uh, Fort Myers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the interesting things, though, that I thought was when he asked that question, he looks over that Thomas, the Thomas Meade guy, and that's the guy who's, like, really running this entire thing. And I think, like you said earlier, due to some other recordings that he had, they didn't want him to talk this time. Mm -hmm. But the lieutenant colonel looks over and he says, are we going to round up, like, are we going to do that to anyone in Bastrop? And he goes, no, 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 but maybe somewhere else kind of like that. And it was really <laughs> weird how he said that. And when people would ask, like, more specific questions, he would always look at Thomas over there standing there, who never really said anything the whole time. All he did was just look, make eye contact, give a nod or, like, throw up, you know, like a number or something. <laughs> And that was yeah, it's it. Kind of, like, kind of like a baseball coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you're kind of messing up. You're on track. Yeah, he was yeah. the coach, all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Here's here's the situation. Okay, we know that there's dual use for all these exercises. Yeah, exactly. Right. But the question and, and and the comments seem to be out there about are we happy with what our government is doing abroad? As Rand Paul has pointed out, every time we go in and overthrow one of these third world dictators, we wind up with Islamic fundamentalists who are very radical in their place. We've turned Libya after we got rid of Gaddafi who hadn't been causing any problems for decades, mm -hmm. basically he'd been quiet. Now that place is essentially a training camp for ISIS. Okay? And one of the things the gentleman kept bringing up was a nation building. And nobody yes. asked him a question about yes. this, but uh, he kept bringing that up. And I, and I was thinking, you know, like, do we really want to continue all this nation building? Look at these nations we supposedly have built up and the chaos that still ensues there. Is that, exactly, is that what we want to do? Do we want to have a U.S. military? Does that enhance us as a country? Does that increase our safety? Okay, does it make us more financially viable to pay for this massive military that we're not allowed to question without having our patriotism questioned? Okay, we're supposed to give a blank check to the federal government, to the military, to basically take down country after country and then fight against the people who are, are, are rising up against us as occupiers. That's what this unconventional asymmetric warfare is everywhere. And we've seen the uh, School of the Americas, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the news earlier, We've seen how decades ago that was being used to train uh, death squads in Central America. Uh, Pinochet's Chile was using that. And of course, we had the Savak in Iran. If anybody wants to know why they chant death to America all the time, go back and read the history of what we did with the CIA with the Savak in Iran. Do we want to continue this kind of uh, process where we're training to torture people, to extract people, to uh, have these regimes of terror in countries that we have taken down because 
the military industrial complex wants it because we've got a guy in a suit sitting over there giving hand signals to the military. That's essentially what this is about. No, that's a very good point, David. And I, that's something I want to mention, uh, I guess we're getting close to here to the close. Uh, he was talking about the, uh, the map of Jade Helm and something that he mentioned was that it was supposed to be a, a simul simulation of, uh, I guess, some type of foreign country. And he said, you know, it's supposed to be a, a, a you know, water surrounded country. And I was out there thinking, I was like, well, why would you do such a thing in a place like Texas? Well, especially this high up in Texas where you really don't have a lot of water to play around in in the first place. Yeah. You know, so, it, you know, there's yeah. a lot of questions that I don't think were sufficiently answered, but I think it's just more or less, you know, a thing to read off the cue cards. Yep. You train the way you're going to fight. You train to in exactly the scenario. And they said that in L.A. when people questioned them. So why are you doing this in the city? And it's like, well. We train the way we fight. If we're going to fight in the mountains, we'd train there. We'd fight in the desert, we'd train there. And it's like, yeah, well, that doesn't answer the question. It just raises a lot more, more. questions. Yeah. And so did this press conference. Thank you so much, Shikari Jackson and Joe Biggs. We'll be right back after the break. We're going to have an interview with a man who has been both at the Bundy Ranch and is now at the Oregon mining situation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the Internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. And listen to The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on your mind. Tonight, we're going to talk to Brandon Rapola. He's a veteran, he's a oath keeper, and he's a modern-day Minuteman who's come to the aid several times to people when they needed help. Of course, he was at the Bundy Ranch, and he is now at the uh, mine in Oregon where there was concern that the BLM this last Saturday was going to take over the mine very precipitously without going through the legal process. The 
mining district there had spent 